Good morning. Welcome to Kingdom Living Church. Um, I'm just wondering how are you today? It's a beautiful day out there. And the beautiful day is the work of God. I don't know how you went to bed last night, waking up this morning. What is God doing here for you? You being alive today, you seeing this day, such a beautiful day. So it's what to give glory to Almighty God. For He is the only one who protects us. And in Him we have security. Praise the Lord. So this morning really is just for us to ponder over God's goodness over us. I remember um, I was reading Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah chapter 33, sorry, Jeremiah 38 and 39, verse 10, chapter 38 and 39. And it talks about how God really used Jeremiah to minister to the people, to, to, to King um, Zedekiah and also um, King Nebuchadnezzar, um, the king of the Babylon. Uh, the king in the Babylon, how God used Jeremiah to minister to them. And you know why? Because Jeremiah trusts the Lord. And this is what we need to do at this time, putting our trust in God. What God has done for us, what God is doing for us, what God is doing in our nation. is, And what is happening in our nation at this moment is to put our trust in God. I'm just going to read, I mean, in Jeremiah 30, 39 verse 18, this is where Jeremiah, the Lord used Jeremiah to minister to one of the eunuchs who actually told the king, King Zedekiah, that Jeremiah has been put in the dungeon. And God used Jeremiah to bless this man, saying, For I will surely deliver you, and you shall not fall by the sword, but your life shall be as a price to you. Because you have put your trust in me, says the Lord. And so this morning, we need to put our trust in God. We need to use this moment to just think of what God is doing in our lives and glorify his name. The Bible says, bless, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And also says in Psalm 34, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So this time, we are just going to use this moment to just think of God's goodness and praise him for what he is doing. Thank him. Bible says in all things, give thanks. So we are going to do our praise and worship as the Deborah, Elizabeth, Esther, and Glory take us into praise and worship. Let us enjoy this moment in the presence of God. And let us just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord.
behind the camera at the point I had to just rest against the wall because I couldn't stand it. The presence of God is so powerful here today and I'm sure in your rooms too. I want to encourage us to just start to worship God in, land, in tongues and start to sing in your room. I love you. I need you. Do my work before. I will never let you go. I don't know what the situation is in your house now, in your home, in your life at work, at, in your family, but we don't want our situation to determine how we worship God. So I just want to encourage you to start to speak in tongues and worship God in languages. If you can't speak in tongues, just use your own language. Worship God in your own way. Give Him praise. Exalt Him. Magnify His name. Our God is an awesome God and there is no God like Him. The fact that you woke up this morning and you are here, you are in your room praising God. There are many people in the hospital at this time. There are many people who are in the grave. There are many people who are in the mortuary. And that you are alive and you are well. You probably have lost somebody close to you. Then we thank God that you are alive today. So let's praise Him. Let's exalt Him. If you are in this room with me, join me. Let's praise God. Use your own language to praise God. God is worthy to be praised. Father, we honor your holy name today. Lord, we adore you. Father, Lord, we exalt you. We praise you, God. We praise you. How great you are, O oh Lord. Blessed be your holy name. We exalt you, Father. Oh, we thank you that you woke us up this morning and we can stand and sing and praise your holy name. How awesome you are, Father. We cannot compare you. are not to be compared with any other God. I praise, I praise you, I praise you, I praise you, I praise you, Lord. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. As you join us today, I want you to look for one reason to praise God. 
you know, however bad it gets, there must be a reason to praise God. For many of us, we have many reasons to thank God. Pick out one reason and just start to thank God for that particular reason. If, is it that you are alive? Is it that God has given you a job? Is it that God is meeting with you? Or the power of God is touching you right now? Start to give Him thanks. Look for some reasons to give God thanks. I don't think I need a reason because the fact that God is God is enough for me to praise Him for. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. If we can just start to sing that song again. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. Jesus, lover of my soul. Come on, let's Lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You're taking me from the merry day. You set my feet upon the rock, and now I know. joining us this morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the awesome worship in your house too. Amen. We give God Amen. praise and we give Him glory and honor Thank because God. our God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, before we do our notices, I just want to say how are you today and how are you coping with the lockdown? That whatever is happening in your home, God is still on the throne. Amen. Amen. Circumstances does not change our God. We just want to give Him thanks and exalt Him because He's worthy to be praised. In Psalm 150 reads, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the heavens of His powers. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to the abundance of His greatness. Amen. Praise Him with trumpet, with trumpet sounds. Praise Him with lute and harp. Praise Him with tambourines and dance. And praise Him with string and wind instruments or flute. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud clashing cymbals. For everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I would really like that sound of drums and loud sounding cymbal at this time. Yes. Uh, we, we have the violin, we've got the... The keyboard, the organ, we've got the guitar. Uh, God is good, but I just feel like making some loud noise unto the Lord this, uh, this morning. I'm really, really excited. Praise you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy. I, I want to tell you, something good is happening to you right now. I, 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 I can feel it in my spirit. Something good is happening to you right now. At this time, when you at the sound of my voice, God is in your home. God is doing something supernatural in your home right now. Hallelujah. Amen. I, oh, I feel it in my bones. I feel it in my spirit. 
Oh, Father, thank you for the awesome things you're doing. I just want to encourage you. I think we did sense that the service was going to be different this morning. As we were practicing last night, we, I just felt the presence of God and I started to ask them to, to ask for anything they wanted to ask. But I just sense God is saying to you today to, to bring your petitions before him. I'm not saying plead with God. I'm just saying ask. God is saying ask me anything and I will do it. I want to encourage you this morning. I don't hold back. You know, it's your loving father. It's just like a daughter, a child. Uh, maybe a two or three year old coming to dad and say, dad, can I have a packet of sweets? You know, you drive past uh, 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 the, the ice cream van and he cries out and you are walking past or driving back or, or riding a, your bike. And yesterday by the park, I saw an ice cream van there and the dad was carrying his, his daughter and the daughter was pointing towards the ice cream van. You could see as a dad, you, you want to walk back and, uh, and buy the ice cream. I just sense, just see yourself like that child in God's hands and, and, and God is saying, ask anything son, ask anything daughter. That's we worshipped him. He's just saying, what, what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? Just like he said with, with Solomon in a dream. I would say, he said, what do you want me to do for you? And I will do it. I sense God is saying to you at this moment to say, what do you want? I want you to ask him. You that are here today, just what God is asking you today, what do you want me to do for you? His heart of love is reaching out to you. Say, what do you want me to do for you? You, you, you just look up, you say, what's Desmond say? The truth is, this is a prophetic word. I'm speaking from the heart of God, speaking to your heart today. Your father is asking you, what do you want me to do for you? I want to give you this time to ask him. Just say, father, this is what I want. Tell him what you want. You know, tell him what you want. Even you that is here, just tell him what you want. What do you want God to do for you? He's saying, what do you want? You've touched his heart with your worship this morning. He's saying, what do you want? Our Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to tell you, may it be unto you according to your faith. You've asked out of the favor of God. Whatever you've asked, You've received in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you, mighty God. Oh, people of God, I want to encourage you. See, as you've asked God, when God starts to do these miracles, please send the messages to us, Lord. If you can put this slide on the phone, uh, uh, the, the contact details, please uh, send it to us on, on YouTube. Uh, I mean, on, on, on our website. You can send us our email, email through our website. It's www.klcstains.co.uk. Or you can contact us on our email address is klcstains at hotmail.co.uk. You can go to our website, send us a message, or send us a message on Facebook. Uh, it's Kingdom Living Church Stains Facebook. Uh, you can contact us through any of these means. We just want to hear your testimonies. This week is your week of testimonies, I tell you. Amen. This week is your week of testimony. Amen. I just Amen. feel so good. I feel so good this, this morning, this afternoon. This is your week of testimonies. Don't look at the things happening around you to determine your testimony. God is saying your, 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 your power, the, the, God is supplying it from heaven, nothing to do with this earth. So trust the Lord. This is your week of miracle. Amen. From Monday to Sunday, you are going to be bombarded with God's goodness. You walk in his favor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I, I just want things to go on and on. I'm really, really excited about what God is doing in your homes right now. Now, at this point, we want to, you're welcome to Kingdom Living Church Saints. Um, we want to collect our offerings now. Uh, this morning, before we started, I already gave my offering because I didn't want to delay. And uh, as I was giving my offering, uh, uh, um, uh, this morning I went to Patricia. I said, I'm about to give my offering. I just sense God is saying to bless it. He wants to bless people today. I didn't realize that this was the kind of service that we're going to have. And God is saying, He wants to bless you. Amen. How many of you like God to bless you? Amen. How many of you want to be blessed financially? Yes. Amen. How many of you are struggling with overdraft? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that reached, it touched some people somehow. <laughs> 
that God is saying He wants to surprise you. Yes, thank you, Lord. Actually, how many of you want to trust God yes. to provide for you so that you will not live by overdraft anymore? Amen. Mm. Yes. Yes. There are blessings coming your way this week in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. And yes. ideas yes. and inspirations yes. and opportunities. Yes. For, for business yeah. and, and to make money is coming your way today in Jesus' name. Amen. And oh, I, I, I don't usually talk about money, but I just feel excited. And, and, and I sense God was saying, you know, uh, bless the offering. As I gave my offering through uh, uh, bank transfer, the way you do it, online banking, I just sense an anointing that came upon me to say, bless the offering. Yeah. So I want to pray for your offering today. Father, I commit everyone at the sound of my voice mm. those who are watching me on the screen and father lord and those who will contact us who will watch this mm. in days and weeks and months to come lord are the in in under the action of your instruction of your spirit you said to bless the offering mm. father lord i i release your blessing in accordance to your word mm -hmm upon your people yes, as they give today yes, whatever amount they give lord as they give from the bottom of their heart in worship and in total surrender to you i pray heavenly father that you will supply all their needs mm -hmm. according to your riches in glory by christ jesus mm -hmm. father lord you will meet every single one at the point of their needs mm -hmm. you know what their heart desire is you know what their heart cry is. You know what they will love to have the most, Lord. You know you are their father. You said, before they ask, I will do it. Mm. Lord, bless your people. Amen. Release your favor upon yes, them. Lord. Touch them with your grace and mercy. Yes, yes. Put sweetness in their life. Today. Amen. Yes. Let them have reasons to celebrate. Amen. Make it a week of testimony yes, in their Lord. lives. Yes, Lord. Open heaven upon them in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you thanks and praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I, I don't know whether I can still preach myself. I feel really, really excited today. Um, let's quickly take our, our notices this week is um, um, we have our men's fellowship on Zoom 7.30 o'clock, 7.30 I think that's 7.30 to 8.10 want to encourage all the men and if Raj you are listening please send the, 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 the link to everyone or forward it to me and I can forward it to all men if you have men in your lives that you, uh, friends you want to invite please invite them, we'll send the link we we'll have some discussions and we'll pray together. And then on Tuesday, we'll have women's prayer meeting on Zoom too. That's on 7.30. And if you have friends that want to join too, please let the women know, let Patricia know or Yemi, and they will contact you or whatever link they send to you. Is it okay for them to share with their friends? No? Mm. Yes. If, if you share with your friends, let them come online to join us for prayers. And then on Wednesday, we have a, a Bible study on Zoom too. Uh, it's 7.30 to 8.10. Um, if you want to share with your friends, that's also okay. And then on Friday, we have a prayer meeting on Zoom too. It's for 40 minutes, 7.30 to 8.10. Sorry, all these times have changed because these are church times. We haven't changed it to Zoom time. So, uh, And then um, we want to thank God for His goodness and for His grace and for His mercy. So, Father, we give you praise for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, we've got 25 minutes. Um, so, I just want to uh, talk today on what I have titled, Storms Don't Last Forever. Storms don't last forever. Can you just say that with me? Storms, Storms don't, don't last, last forever. forever. Do you believe that? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. I remember a few months ago when we were in Florida, uh, summer last year, we were told that there was this uh, 
hurricane that was coming. Who remember that? Yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the hurricane again? Does anybody Dorian. remember? Hur Dorian. Hurricane Dorian. Dorian. <laughs> hurricane Dorian. And we and we were all in our rooms and they were listening to news on weather and it was it was just so terrible. He went to Bahamas and, and just flattened the whole place. And there was fear in Florida that it was going to come. And uh, everyone was afraid. Do you know that for about two weeks, we were off watching TV and following the, 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 the move of the hurricane storm. When it's on, it destroys everything. But it didn't last forever, did it? No. It came and it went. Some people lost their lives, but most people survived. Hallelujah. Amen. Storms of life. Last week, I started on what I titled uh, In Times Like This, and, and talking about storms of life. Today, I want to continue on that part two of times like this. Storms don't last forever. Amen. 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 Whatever storm that you are in now, Is it to do with coronavirus? The whole nations are going through that night like a storm. It's just raging across nations. And thousands of people have died in this country and many other countries across the world. Above that is the, is the fear. The fear that really has arrested heart. I know people who've lost their lives. I know people that are, are that, that friends and and families that are connected with that lost their lives. Uh, but the truth is, God is the God of comfort. Mm -hmm. He's the God of grace. I want to tell you that God himself lost his son in the storm of life. Jesus Christ passing through the storm like a big wave. It cost him his life. He was willing to lay down his life on the cross and he died. But the good news with God is that storm is never the end of the story. There is a story during, before, during and after the storm. So when Jesus died, the, the wave came, the enemy came, they thought they were taking his life and he laid his life down himself. He became a victim of the storm. But the good thing about God is there is story after the storm. Say to somebody, there is story after the storm. There is story after the storm. My friend, your story has not ended if you haven't seen God's miracle. When Jesus went to the cross, he died. Three days he was in the belly of the ground and people thought that was it. It was finished. But the Bible says that God came and raised him from the dead. And salvation came. With that terrible storm, God's plan for salvation was brought to life. And millions of people today, generations since then, have come to know the Lord. Church, after every storm... There is a great harvest. There is a great opportunity. I want to encourage you to watch out for divine opportunities today. God is up to something. Mm, hallelujah. We might say the worst, but the truth is God is up to something. When Jesus died, the disciples thought that was the end. They were all hiding. But the truth is God came and lifted him from the, from, from the grave and gave him life. And the disciples, because he get, they received life, they were still afraid. But Jesus appeared to them several times. And, 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 and even the doubting Thomas, Jesus came and, and said, touch me. This is the mark on my side that they pierced me. The storm, this is the mark from the storm. And my fingers, many of you have suffered scars from the storm. If not from the hot, the... the, the, the the, what is it this time? The virus? 
you have gone through different storms in life and some of you are still going through different storms in life and the, the fallout from storms you are still people think you are okay that you have recovered but the truth is you are still experiencing some of the fallout some of the residues from the storms you still look at those scars and those pains I was speaking to a friend of mine recently and we were chatting and I remember she had an operation. I don't, I don't think she mind me sharing this. Uh, she had a severe operation many years ago. And uh, during this whole um, lockdown, and she said I was one of those that I was told to, to stay at home. So I've been staying at home for about three months. I had forgotten about that because we've been giving testimonies of uh, miraculous healing. But the truth is with every storm there are fallouts. And there are people still suffering the effect of those storms, but for the grace of God. But I bring you good news today. God said to tell you, there are opportunities in storms. Mm. Your storm will not last forever. Amen. Your storm will come to an end. Amen. Actually, there is grace that God gives you to survive the storm. Some of you have been through some difficult times and you, you wonder, how did I survive that? It is called grace. It's God's grace that carried you. So I want to share a, a very brief story uh, 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 and, uh, and we'll pray. I'll make some points and we'll pray. It's from Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. You see, I want to, uh, uh, okay, let me just read it first and I'll explain. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. If you can put it up, this is on the screen. They're enjoying me so much. They're enjoying my sermon so much that uh, I forgot to put it on the screen. Well done. God is really touching somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, at least I can make people smile. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because it is wicked. its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found the ship bound for a port. And after paying the fare, he went aboard and save for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break. You see, sometimes our storms is caused by us. Other times you are not. But I'm telling you, even if your storm is as a result of your disobedience, there is still hope for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, uh, let's, I'll move on to the second part of the, my reading. It's still, first, uh, it's still Jonah chapter 1 from verse 15 to 17. Is that on the screen? Mm -hmm. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. And this, and this, at this the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Verse 17. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. In case you don't know the story, I want to give you a very unbridged version. The city, city of Nineveh, the people, it was a very big city, very famous city, very rich city. They were living in sin and the sin of the people reached out to God. How many of you know such cities today around where you live? And some people say the city of London is like that, where we are. And some people say that UK have walked far away from God. I don't know how many cities you can look to and call out that you would not think that sin abound in all those cities. But, but the truth is, just because sin abound in all those cities does not mean that God has forgotten them. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine sent me an email and was saying this nation has walked far away from God. And then, but the other things that followed was a message of encouragement. But the Lord just, that pricked me in my spirit. And the Lord said, no, if you are interceding for the nation, you should not be using your mouth to curse the nation that you are interceding for. If you want to speak into situations and say, repent, that's a different thing. But to make pronunciation, a proclamation, from the, from the mouth of the child of God, of ministers, of children of God, of those who are, we use our mouth to pronounce judgment on our nation and decree that this is not a godly nation. Where you are here, the church is here, and you are saying it's not a godly nation. God has put you there to take a stand, to bring his righteousness. 
And yet we are saying it's not a godly nation. I believe that the hand of God is upon this nation at this time. Actually, I prophesy to this nation because God has been giving me some words to speak. God told me, he said, my, 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 my heart of love is warming the heart of this nation to myself. That these people are ready to turn to me. See, there is a special grace and favor of God upon the United Kingdom right now. So if you are a child of God, be careful what you say. You need to hear from God before you make pronouncements. You need to hear from God before you speak about the government. What is God saying that he wants to do? Agree, come into an agreement with God and declare it on your nation. Don't be one of those who wait to see things happen before you start to praise God. You need to hear from the heart of God and see what God is doing and partner with God to make that thing to come right now. Right now, UK, the UK has the, the, the favor of God. There is the UK is the focus of heaven. Heaven is focusing here. The love of God is pouring out on the United Kingdom. If you are a man of God, I want you to come to God. If you are a woman of God, if you are a leader, if you are a church leader, my friend, wake up, God is saying. I want to use you to bring revival to this nation. Do not say the, the, the West revival 100 years ago, we have walked away from it. You are, some of you are waiting for government to make decisions. You see, preaching of the gospel is not up to the government. You know, they are saying BBC is allowing Muslims to, to preach and run in Ramadan. Muslims pay a, a, a BBC a, 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 a fee too. It's the, you see, so the way we think sometimes, you see, the, we, it's not our exclusive right. BBC is not our exclusive right. It's a state uh, uh, television and people pay. Muslims, Christians, non-religious people, they pay the BBC, what do they call it, uh, fee. We pay, don't we? TV license. TV license. Everybody pay for that. So people who pay have right to it. So it's not the duty of BBC to preach the gospel for us. It's not the duty of Boris Johnson to preach the gospel for us. It's not the duty of the parliament to preach the gospel for us. The church is here to preach the gospel. We should be influencing what happens in BBC. We should be influencing what happens in parliament. We should be influencing what happens in number 10. We have the power of prayer. We have the authority to declare words. What we say can shape the hearts of the kings. What are we waiting for, church? Let's stop complaining. God is saying, wake up, church. Christians, wake up. Stop complaining. Do something. If you don't do it, the nation, the devil will take over. The so-called people you are afraid of will take over the nation. If they take it over, it's because you have vacated the seat that God created, that God gave to us. Hallelujah. Amen. It was the same thing in Nineveh. The Bible says they were living in sin. But God knew that sin always attracts judgment. That because it's not the will of God for any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. He sent uh, 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 Jonah to go to Nineveh. To go and tell them what God was going to do if they did not repent. Jonah wouldn't go. He probably was afraid of the city. He wanted to go to Tashish, went to Joppa uh, to catch a, 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 a ship, bought a ticket to travel. And you see, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So God will do it. If God did not, if God did not, uh, 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 how do I put it? Last time I remember I, sh I was sharing, people were, you see, if God did not spare his only Son, that's what the Bible tells us, if he did not spare his Son, but he gave him for us all. What, how do you think he will spare you if you don't preach the gospel? So Jonah wanted to run. That because God so loved the world, he so loved Nineveh, God caused a storm. And that storm came. Jonah's disobedience affected everyone who was on the ship. There was a mighty storm. People were afraid they were going to die. When they cried out to God, the, the Bible said they casted Lord, it fell on Jonah. And so it, now they knew that Jonah was the cause of the storm, that it was this one was from God. It was because somebody was running away from God. He explained to them, he said, throw me in the sea and there will be this, the tempest we seize. And they threw him in, the tempest seized. I don't know if you 
have been like in the position of Jonah where because of some disobedience, God, you have been thrown in the seas as if you are, you're going to die. But that's not the end of the story. He's a God of grace. When Jonah was thrown in the sea, a whale came and swallowed him up. So the way, if you go to chapter uh, 2 of uh, Jonah, don't, you don't show it. So you see, it was given like how he cried out to God. He said he went to the depth of the mountain in the, under the sea and he came out and he cried out to God and the, and the, and the, 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 the uh, whale brought, vomited him out. In the midst of a mighty storm, God brought protection. Church, you might not even know it yet, but it is God's protection that has kept you thus far. Mm. Jonah was crying out, please Lord rescue me, not knowing that in the belly of the whale was his safety. Mm. And God brought him. And the Bible now said in chapter 3, the second time God said to Jonah, now go to Nineveh, go and preach. And then Jonah went there. As Jonah cried out, Every single one, the king and all of them came, they repented, they fasted, they caused even all the animals to fast. And the Bible says they turned from their sin. I'm telling you, church, there is life after the storm. There is life after the storm. Great revival came after the storm. The whole city was saved from one man. Don't forget, there was no television then. There was no multimedia. He preached the gospel to a few people and those ones shared it across the whole city and he got to the king that this is what this prophet from, from Israel is saying. The Bible said the whole city came and declared fasting and they repented. There is that same grace upon the UK right now. Grace for repentance. The heart of the people is will be won by God. Church, if you will arise at this time, this UK is God's own country. The hand, the grace of God is upon this nation right now. God is saying, Church, wake up. Church, arise. I have touched the heart of this nation. Put the other slide for me, please. Glory. I've got a few more minutes to go. See, God is love. God poured his heart on Nineveh. He wanted to save them. In the same way, God's grace is pouring on the United Kingdom right now. Every soul is precious to God. God has not, I don't care what you have done, God has not forgotten you. Amen. You as a child of God, God has not forgotten you. And, and I want to tell you that God has a heart for the nations of the world. God is saying he hasn't forgotten them. Let's not condemn those that God has poured grace on. So God is love. For us, we need to know the love of God. The Bible said the love of God has been poured abroad in our heart as believers. And, and that grace is upon you. See, the reason why God is prospering you, he's prospering you so that you can do his work. You need good health to preach the gospel. You need money to preach the gospel. You need favor to preach the gospel. You need connection and education to preach the gospel. So that's why God wants to empower his empower the church. I bet unless the church rise up, we will miss this opportunity. Give me put the next slide please. Because God 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 is love God is love. In Matthew chapter 12 verse 40 he said, for even as Jonah was 3 days in the in the and 3 nights in the belly of the Sea monster, that's the way. So will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. You see, you can compare Jesus' sacrifice. You know, Jesus was now saying, they were saying, give us a sign. And he said, there will be no sign given to you. Except like the sign of Jonah, when he was the belly of the fish, three days and three nights. But when he came out, what happened? He went to Nineveh and the whole city was saved. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. So there is hope for us. In the same way, move to the next slide. So in the same way, Jesus was in the, in the belly of the, of the earth three days and three nights. And when he came back, God raised him to the dead, uh, from the dead. And that gave us hope. See, that power, that's when he was able to say, say, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. You now go and preach the gospel. I want to tell you, this coronavirus, has, God has allowed, God is using it to wake his church up. 
And God is using it to wake up, warm up the hearts of men and women. People are asking about God across different nations right now. We cannot have a better opportunity than this. There is life after the storm, I tell you. Amen. There is life after the storm. There are opportunities that God has made available to us in, 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 after this storm. So you see, God will reach you wherever you are. I tell you, God will reach you wherever you are. He reached uh, Jonah in the, he, in the sea, the, put him in the belly of the fish and brought him out. And then he will calm the storm. And you ca can you see his outstretched arms? God will reach you wherever you are. God is calming the storm. God has stretched out his hands to rescue you, to reach you, to save you, to redeem you. Can you see that? Jonah did not see when the whale swallowed him. Before he realized it, he was in the belly of the whale. He was safe. And then when God released him after his miraculous uh, uh, redemption, what happened? God empowered him. And a single, a single message saved the whole city. Church, there are cities to be saved right now. There are, your street is about to be saved if you will rise up. Your home is about to be saved if you will rise up. Your town is about to be saved if you will rise up. Your, your office is about to be saved if you will rise up. There is something that God is doing. You are saying, I need to be well first. I need to be strong. Everything needs to be okay with me. No, Jonah was not well. Did you hear the message he preached? It was a message of hatred. Jonah, after God saved the people, he was angry that God shows grace. I want to tell you, you don't have to have it together. Open your eyes. See, the, the field is ripe. Open your eyes. See the opportunities. Sometimes there are business opportunities that God has given to you that he's going to use to save nations. Church, wake up and seize your opportunities. The next slide, please. The church is God's army on the ground. It's you. You want things, you want coronavirus to end here and now. It's up to you. Wake up. Declare it. Speak it. The other day God was telling me, he said, he said, look, coronavirus is over. Then you need to declare. Don't wait until you see. And then he was starting to say, he said, it's time to, to, to lift the lockdown. But the government seems to need to know the indication. There are things that they are looking for before they think it's safe. So start to speak that into existence. Because in heaven, as far as God is concerned, that's sorted. You now speak in the church. If you don't, what God has ordained won't happen. God is waiting on you. You know, he said, can you catch the heart of God? Can you catch the heart of God? There is great harvest. Not just harvest of souls, but there is the, the harvest of souls, but there are resources that is needed that God is giving you that you can use to bring in this harvest. This is our assignment, church. This is our assignment. The next slide. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. You see, God showed grace. When the people repented, the whole city became the city of God. So who is saying that we have walked away from God as a, as a city of London? The whole city, there's an anointing to save the city. This town we are in stage, there is an anointing to save the town. God's grace is on these things right now, but it's up to you and I. And God is going to, if you will step out and, and take opportunities that God will bring across your way. Sometimes it will be business opportunities that allow you to start to minister to business people. You never can tell. Sometimes it's opportunity for, to, for education that God will use to you, you start to minister to your lecturers and to your students. You, you never can tell. There are opportunities. There are opportunities right now. Are you ready? Are you willing to take it? Because church, there's grace for such a time as this. Don't you miss it? Because the best, God has saved the best for the last. This time, this hour, this is your hour. If you are a Christian, you will not have a better time than this. Yeah. Yeah. 
because uh, 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 put the next slide i just I'm, I, I'm running i just have 30 more seconds you see seize every opportunity can you see the opportunities rise and take your place there are thrones waiting to be occupied oh god has set thrones that he wants to set his children on there are people that have been displayed through this coronavirus and they've lost their thrones and god is waiting for people to take it up will you be one of them what are you waiting for there is no better time than this. You need to wake up and seize those thrones and occupy it. When a righteous man is on the throne, they rule, they govern well, they are able to help the government and help the church. Church, we need to spread out. There's grace upon your life. Father, I just pray your great grace upon your people. I pray that you will open our eyes to see those thrones mm -hmm. that you want us to sit on. I decree and declare to you that God's eye, God with the light of God, will shine upon your throne that you need to yeah. occupy. In the name of Jesus, yeah. this is your time. Mm -hmm. This is your year. This is your hour. God is saying, church, arise. Church, arise and take your place in me. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless this word into your heart. And as you go this week, I just pray. That you will go under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will see those opportunities. You will seize them. And God will grant you favor. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I hope you've been blessed with that um, sermon. Um, this week just grab the opportunity God has given to you. And just go out there and ex make exploit. It's what God wants really. Favor is upon your life and just let God's favor just experience it this week. Throughout this week, there will be blessings upon blessings and you will have testimony to give unto God. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.